Warframe is an amazing game, but it tends to be a little overwhelming here and there, to be honest, especially for new players. So I went ahead and asked the German community on my other channel what they would have loved to know before starting the game, and they came up with a metric ton of answers. That's why today I got for you 10 things that you need to know before starting your Warframe journey. Let's go! At first, we gotta talk about one of the most important things in the game, which is hard-earned cash. Speaking of Platinum, which is the premium currency that you can buy from real money. As a beginner, you get blessed with 50 of it for free, you will see it up here in the corner, and we gotta talk about what you're gonna do with those 50 Platinum, because this is something that you can really mess up with and nobody tells you what to do with it. What you're gonna do is hit Escape, go to Equipment, Inventory, and then you can see your Warframes and your weapons. And as a beginner, you will not have as many weapons as I do, of course, but you can also physically not hold as many, because your inventory slots for weapons and Warframes will be highly limited. So what you're gonna do with your premium currency with your 50 starting plat is, you're gonna go here, and you buy two new slots for weapons, which costs you 12. You go for this, and you purchase it, and then you purchase for 12, you get two more weapon slots. If you go down all the way in the list, you will see that they have been added. And you will do that two entire times, spending 24 platinum for four more weapon slots, which is a great improvement for beginners. And the rest of the plat, you will go to the Warframe section and do the same, where you can buy one Warframe slot for 20 platinum, meaning you will spend 44 of your 50 starting platinum, and that means you can hold one more Warframe than your competitors and four more weapons. But what if you need more? What if 50 is simply not enough for you and you're willing to spend a bit more cash? Of course, you can buy Platinum for real money on the Warframe website, but one thing that I really want to hammer into your head is Platinum is really expensive and you don't really want to buy it if you don't have a discount. A discount you will sometimes get when you log into the game, especially if you have been offline for a couple of days, the game tends to give you a Platinum discount reaching from 20% off to even 75%. And if you get 50% or more discount, then is the time to buy Platinum, and then you will also buy the more expensive packages, because that is the point in time where it really pays off. However, one great thing is that you do not even have to pay a single cent to get Platinum. That's right, as a player who does not want to pay money, you don't have to. You can go ahead and sell stuff that you acquired in your missions to other players for Platinum. And the way you do this is via trade. Trade is kind of a complicated thing and I don't want to go too deep into it in this video because we will not have the time for it. Just one thing that I also want to smash into your head that you don't forget it. If you hit T, you will find a trade chat down here. This is where people post their offers and what they're looking for and how much platinum they want. And as a beginner, do not use it. I cannot stress this enough. Do not use it. Not only are you gonna get eye cancer if you look at this for more than three seconds, people in there know the market. They know the prices and you as a beginner don't. So don't expect any mercy. People will rip you off shamelessly. If you wanna trade, then go to Warframe Market. This is sort of like an outsourced auction house for Warframe, which is on a third-party website. You can type in any item that is tradable and it will show you what the cheapest offer is, so never ever pay more than that. I'll put the link to Warframe Market in the description. Oh, and by the way, if you happen to have a super great Warframe beginner tip that I missed out in this video, feel free to just toss it in the comments down below. Maybe somebody's gonna read it and be really happy about it. All right. At this point in the video, I'm gonna be upfront with you. I'm gonna say it out loud, Warframe is a very complex game, it has a lot of different mechanics, and you do not have the slightest idea which one to prioritize if you're a new player. And guess what? Nobody's gonna tell you. At least nobody in the game, so I'm gonna tell you now. Warframe is primarily a game of player choice, so there's not the number one path to take. However, there's one route where most veterans would agree that it's a good idea to start doing that as a new player, and that is finishing the star chart. Simply finish your missions one by one until you unlock the new planet and then you rinse and repeat. At the beginning, you might be a bit bored and think, is that really all to it? But I promise you, it's gonna get better. Once you arrive at Uranus, roughly around that corner, the story will really start to pick up and you're gonna have a blast, I promise you. Just one disclaimer, don't be sidetracked by the open worlds on your path through the star chart. 
I know that for us gamers, open worlds are always big and interesting, but believe me, open worlds in Warframe, even though accessible pretty early in the game, are something you rather come back later when you have a higher level, because by then the rewards there will be more intriguing to you and also the progression in the open world itself will be way faster on a higher level. But still, don't be afraid to experiment. Feel free to simply test out every weapon that you run into and see if it's fun or not. Nobody's gonna punish you for trying out new things. The quote-unquote meta or the min-maxing of your builds is something that you can postpone until later in the game. At the beginning of the game, we have talked about hard-earned cash, about platinum and about all the nice and shiny premium items that you can get for yourself if you're willing to pay some cash. But you might be wondering, what are you going to do if you don't want to pay money for Platinum and you don't want to trade for Platinum and don't want to get into all the nitty-gritty details? Well, I have the solution for you and that is point three and will be Nightwave. You will find the Nightwave console on the left side of your orbiter when you run into the cockpit and the Nightwave is basically nothing but a season pass. You can see I just got a reward here. A free season pass for everybody who plays Warframe. At the top, you will see which level grants you which reward, and at the bottom, you will have weekly and daily challenges that you can complete to get Nightwave experience, which you will need to level up your rank. You'll need 10,000 XP to rank up once, and these are the challenges and what they give you in experience. As a new player, of course, you will probably not be able to do all the, especially the big ones. You will not have access to the missions that you need and whatever. But I highly recommend just look into it. Just look into it. Maybe there's something that you can do. For example, here we have plain nine invasion missions of any type, and that's absolutely possible. You just go over to your star chart, for example, check it out, then you have your invasions up here, and you just run some of them. You will have some of your star chart, and, you know, as a beginner, you will be able to do that and snatch your nice, easy 4,500 XP, which almost gets you to half rank two, if you're just starting out. So long story short, if you're a beginner, check out the Nightwave console every week, and try to do here and there some of the challenges and you will get yourself some nice premium rewards for free. No, you don't need to say it. I know, there's a whole lot to know about Warframe and I'm here to help and assist you on your adventure. So if you don't want to miss out on the latest tutorials on all sorts of game mechanics or just news about Warframe in general, just think about leaving me a sub or dropping me a like to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. What I have for you next is one of the key aspects of the game, one of the most important things to know, and the game actually never mentions it at all. What I'm talking about is your mastery rank. So what is this mastery rank and more importantly, how do I level it up quite quickly? Well, I'm gonna tell you. You gain mastery experience by first finishing star chart mission. The first time you finish a mission on the star chart, you know, one of those that are blinking up blue, the ones that you haven't completed yet, you will get a set number of mastery XP for every mission that you finish for the first time. That's one source of early game mastery experience. Then what you can do is level up weapons and warframes. For every level that you gain with a weapon, you will get 100 mastery XP. For every level that you gain with a warframe, you will get 200 and so on and so forth. This way, you will get your mastery XP up. We can look again in my profile. On the side, we see that I need 67,657 more mastery XP if I want to level up to rank 29. Once you have the required XP, if you hit escape, you will have a small blue icon right here which says that you can do a mastery test. A mastery test is what you need to finish before you will actually get to the next higher mastery rank. And mastery tests are a little bit tricky. Reason for that is, you can only do one per day and if you fail that one, you will have to wait another day until you can try again. Gladly, there's a nice little workaround. You can go to your navigation and go to any relay relay. For example, let's just go to Earth, to the Strata relay. Hit escape, go fast travel, Cephalon Samaris, and then you will end up in a nice little room where on this side, <laughs> the little vault here shows it, you will see all the mastery rank tests. And you can go to the test and click here, mastery rank one test, and then you can, for example, if it was mastery rank one that you were attempting to do, and that's it. Get your mastery XP by leveling your equipment and finishing the star chart, and then once you have enough, do a level up and try it at Cephalon Samaris' place first. And just because the whole mastery rank thing wasn't already complicated enough, I have a new game mechanic for you that you also might want to check out. 
Once you reach Mastery Rank 3, you can go to this console here and pick a Syndicate, or maybe even multiple. Syndicates are sort of interest groups in the game from different factions and you can join them, be allied to them, be opposed to them and rank them up, rank up your reputation to get really nice rewards. For example, I have maxed out the Arbiters of Hexes. If I click them and I see the offerings, I can get a lot of different mods or weapon parts or what really whatever they offer me I can get for my reputation. For example, this nice armor set right here. The great thing about syndicates is you don't even have to actively do anything for them. You can simply level them up passively and I'll show you how to do it. Once you join a syndicate for the first time, they will give you a sigil. Then you go to your Warframe, Appearance, Sigils, and then you, let's say, pick the front sigil and... Let's go for this one here. This one should be from Cephalon Suda. And if I pick it, 11% of my experience that I gain during my normal everyday mission will go towards my reputation for Cephalon Suda. And this way I gain reputation by passively doing whatever I'm doing anyway. This is also why I would recommend to do it as early as possible because that means you can start out early and start maxing out your Syndicate reputation. Do you like great and really deep stories in science fiction? Me too! And believe me, Warframe does have this, it just doesn't really seem like it in the beginning. To be honest, the start of the game more plays like a glorified version of Fruit Ninja and believe me, the release of Warframe Mobile is not gonna change that perception for the better. In fact, the real starting point of the lore, of the presentation of the main story, only starts happening once you reach Uranus. And yes, I am aware of the fact that by this point you have already completed two-thirds of the star charge. Don't ask me who came up with that genius idea, but it is the way it is. That's why I strongly recommend, if you're a fan of good science fiction and deep storytelling, and you have the feeling that the game is not really giving you as much of that as you would like to have, just try to be a little bit more patient, play until Uranus and give the game a second chance and maybe it can convince you that it was worth the wait because it will come up with some great and interesting characters, deep and super exciting world building and even plot twists that you would never imagine there could be and the whole time travel paradox. So there's a whole lot of science fiction in the box. But if you want to play through the entire story, your beginning equipment is not really going to cut it. So what you want to do sooner or later is build new weapons in Warframes and this is how you do it. Whatever you want to build, you will do it in the foundry on the left side of your orbiter. Whenever you want to build something, be it a weapon or a Warframe, you will do it in the foundry, which is on the left side of your orbiter right here. If you access it, you will be able to build weapons or Warframes, primary, secondary, melee weapons, whatever your heart desires, as long as you have first the blueprint for building the thing and second the resources needed to do so. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. First, the blueprint you will mostly get from the market. You go to the console here, let's go to weapons, and then let's say we want to build the angstrom. We hit the angstrom and we're not gonna buy it for platinum, we're gonna go for blueprint, pay some credits and get the blueprint for it. It also shows you right here which resources you will need to build it. Hit here, purchase the blueprint and then it will appear in your foundry and you can build it. Of course, you also need the resources to do so. And if you're wondering where you get all those different resources, you want to look no further than the star chart. On the star chart, you can go and click resource drones right here. And then when you go and select, let's say, Venus and hover over this here, you can see which items you can get at Venus. If you check out Ceres here, you will see which resources are to be found here. And this way you can check out on which planet you can get which resources. But simply getting everything from the market here would be too simple, wouldn't it? Yeah, unfortunately it is. And that's why some of the blueprints you will not get from the market, neither for the weapons nor for the warframes. Those blueprints can be accessed by doing various things along your journey. And if you want to know precisely which blueprint for which weapon and which Warframe you will get from which mission, I highly suggest simply checking out the Warframe wiki because it's your number one source of information. Telling you where you get every blueprint for every weapon and every Warframe would of course go too far in this video, so Warframe wiki is a great place to start out. But simply building your weapons and Warframes is not the end of the story. If you want to be really strong, then you gotta upgrade your loadout with mods. 
The modding system is the core of the game and, I would even argue, the most important game mechanic of all. But the problem is that it is kind of overwhelming to talk about it and I don't even want to try to somehow break it down into two minutes because I'm afraid that if I do this, you will leave this video being even more confused about modding than when you were when you came here and that's the last thing I want to do. So I'm currently working on making a video for the sole purpose of explaining what mods are, what you can do with them, what you gotta care about when you mod your weapons and warframes, how it works, which actions you can take, and just break down the entire modding system of the game for beginners, making it as clear and understandable as possible. Once this video is uploaded, you will find it up there in the info cards, and if you want to see it on your front page on YouTube day one after release, subscribe to the channel, but you know that drill. As I just mentioned, mods are super important. Without mods, your Warframe is not gonna work out the way you want them to. And those mods can be also upgraded to make the numbers on them even higher. For example, here we have Point Strike giving you a 25% crit chance, and if you were to level it up completely, you would get 150% more crit chance, which is quite the improvement, I would say. For upgrading the mods, you will need a resource called Endo. You see your current Endo count up here in the Upgrade tab, and let me tell you one thing, Endo is always short. You will always be in need of Endo and that doesn't really change as you progress in the game because you will need it all the time. So one thing you want to do is spend your Endo really carefully and don't splurge it on unnecessary things, especially in the beginning. One thing that you could do, for example, if I wanted to go for a 10 level mod, you know, you see 10 dots down here and I could level this one up here for 10 levels. This would cost me 20,000 endo, which is quite a lot and I don't even have that much right now. However, the mod costs increase exponentially. For example, if I wanted to bring the mod to level 10, it will cost 20,000. If I only bring it to level 9, it only is half of it. And if I only go to level 8, I will just pay 5,000, which I could almost afford. And the best thing is, the numbers on the mods do not decrease exponentially. Meaning, I could pay 20,000 for 165% more damage, but 135% more damage, which is, to be honest, not that much smaller, only costs 5,000. So, if you're short on Ando, there's no shame in simply leveling to 8 or 9 on your big mods to save this precious resource. Another thing that you absolutely do not do, never ever, is sell your duplicate mods for cash. Do not do it. Do not sell your mods for credits, because mods can also be sold for endo. And believe me, you want this endo instead of those credits. And speaking of endo, one thing you can also do once you reach Mars on your star chart, you will have access to Maru's Bazaar. If you go into the Bazaar Room and talk to Maru, who will be there waiting for you, you can start a mission called the Weekly Ayatan Treasure Hunt. This is Maru, you talk to her, and then you can look for Ayatan treasures. You can do one of those Ayatan Treasure Hunts per week and you will be guaranteed to get an Ayatan treasure out of it. Ayatan treasures can also be accessed in your mod screen and they're like sculptures that you can sell back to Maru for a lot, a lot of endo. For example, if I were to go and select this one, I could sell it for 1425 endo, which is quite a lot, especially for beginning players and given the fact that you get one of those things for free every week, do it as soon as you have Mars unlocked. Whew. Sounds like quite a lot, doesn't it? And to be honest, that's what it is. Warframe is a very complex and big game with a lot of mechanics. And it is absolutely no shame if you come to the conclusion that Warframe simply isn't for you. I mean, I'm here to help you get into the game and to assist you with as many steps as I can and also answer all the questions in the comments, but of course I can only do so much. And if you decide for yourself that it's too much for you, you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, or simply not the will, that's okay. Warframe is complex, and Warframe wants a lot of your time. But if you like these types of games, and if you simply have the time and search for another game to dump a thousand hours into, then believe me, Warframe is a good choice. And if you're already working in a 9-to-5 job and simply don't have that much time, of course, like many other free-to-play games, Warframe also offers a fair amount of premium boosters and everything that helps you get along the way faster, so even if you don't have hours and hours on end, you can still enjoy the game if you're willing to pay a few dollars here and there. If you found this helpful, 
you know what to do, and I hope to see you in the next one. This is Blackie, over and out.